Welcome to Intune Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show with Steve. Hi. <laughs> Perfect and timing, babe. Steve, as always, and me, uh, the intern. Uh, it's been it's been a minute, uh, I feel, since I've uh, been on one of these videos. We've been uh, sort of gallivanting around the world, going to conferences and stuff. We have, um, we have. But we're finally, we've finally found some time to talk, which is exciting. Um, yes. So on that, Steve, uh, I'm here. What are we doing? It's a lovely Saturday. Why, why am I it's talking to you? What are we talking about today? Saturday. So what we're talking about today is setting up Event Hub in Intune. And the question comes back to why would I want to do this? What As, you, yeah, what, what is Event Hub, I guess, well, is that, the, that, the main that's question. That's probably a good question, yeah. So... <laughs> If we cast our mind back a long time ago, it's what used to be called um, BizTalk. Mm. And it's an event bus. So basically, I send a, a task to it, and then something else can grab that and do something with the message. Okay. So rather than like, so we've, we've traditionally, we've set things up into logic, um, log analytics, right? Log analytics sure. gives us the ability to do reporting on that data. Mm -hmm. Whereas Event Hub, it holds it for... Uh, up to seven days or until somebody goes and looks at the message and processes it. And does something with it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, you know, Event Hub is obviously just a really cool way of, you know, uh, you know, holding actions or, you know, alerts and then doing things based on them. Um, that sure. seems cool. What's the, so what's, what's the problem statement or what's the scenario that you've, that you've cooked up today uh, for us to play around <laughs> with? Um, so one of the conversations I've had with a couple of my peers recently is, well, we've got all these PowerShell scripts and we're hitting the Graph API, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. it, it works in a lab. But when we get to multi-thousand seat organizations, we have to deal with paging, we have to deal with uh, uh, quotas, we have to deal with the number of times you can hit the endpoint in a set yeah. period of time. It's a real thing. Yeah. So what this gives us is the ability to say, well, I don't actually care that it's real time running. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and harvest or grab that information as it's being processed through. Sure. So th there's a couple of endpoints that we have or um, options that we can connect into uh, inside Intune, which we'll, we'll mm -hmm. step into now. Um, so Ben's going to be stepping through while I'm talking him through it with his awesome mouse bouncing around a little bit. Yeah, look, I don't know really what's going on there, but it seems seems to be working okay now. It looks good now, yeah. Um, <laughs> so first off, um, we're going to start over in the Azure portal. Okay, cool. I can do that. Because we need to create a namespace. The first thing we will do here, though, is we're going to create a resource group. The reason why we're going to create a resource group is because this actually creates a lot of objects uh, as part of what we're working on. Sure. Um, so rather than having it sprawl across our tenant, which we do quite well, um, mm -hmm. we're going to sit there and, and bundle it all together. Um, and it yeah. looks like Ben's having a lot of fun with his mouse today. It's fine on my screen. It's just on the shared screen. So everyone just follow, follow the correct mouse and you'll be fine. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a resource group. Normally, yep. uh, for, for, for most of, for most of us. Uh, the resource group gets created in the first instance or the first thing that we're creating and then we don't really think about it. Um, but when you're creating these sort of larger scale uh, solutions, you know, creating that group just to sort of cluster everything together is always a smart idea. Yeah. Um, so we'll go in, we'll hit create. Uh, we'll use the sponsorship that we have and we're Thank just going to call Microsoft. this. Uh, let's have a look. What do we got? What do we got? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, uh, now we'll do this correctly. Uh, emojis are always at the end, not at the start. Uh, That's so correct. I'm going to say event hub uh, demo. Demo. That looks pretty good. Kind of yep. spaces, but you can have emojis. Uh, <laughs> I love that. So the region is very important here um, yeah. because everything needs to be in the same region as you go through it. So sure. we're going to select uh, Eastern Australia. Well, East Australia, I can't remember. There you go, Australia, Australia East. It's <laughs> the yep. one. Um, nice. And then we're just going to hit review and create. We're not using yeah, tags cool. in this environment, so we don't need to go beyond that. <laughs> Apparently, you can't use emojis. Oh, boo. Okay, fine. <laughs> everyone's everyone's a party pooper. That's fine. That's all good. All right, review and create. Validation it's interesting successful. that the um, 
regex on that uh, text box doesn't actually call, capture it. So yeah, we'll go to yeah. that resource group. Cool. Um, and now we're in there, right? Simple. The next step we're going to do is we're going to create a resource and mm -hmm. this is going to be called an event hub. Uh, and there's multiple options with event hub. Um, and we'll see that as we go through the demos today. Yep. So, so we're, we're going to go start... ahead and yep, event that hubs. One yep. Nice. Uh, and we're going to, if you just hit the plans button for me, we'll just quickly have a look through here. You can see there's sure. multiple tiers available, what you can connect to, what you can't connect to. Um, there's a premium, there's a dedicated. We're going to go the cheap option and it is the standard basic one um, that will do what we want. But depending upon your size of your organization, you might need to go larger. Um, it all just comes down to how it works in your environment, how often you're triggering it, et cetera, et cetera, the amount of data. Yeah. And but I would for suggest what we're in, using. Oh, yeah. yeah, in in these sort of things, you know, obviously uh, wherever you're wherever you're provisioning uh, let's call it infrastructure uh, or services in, in Azure uh, for these sort of scenarios. Uh, it is always best to start with a standard tier and just, you know, sort of kick the tires initially. Um, yes. You'll find out pretty quickly whether you sort of meet the threshold of this or not or whether you need to go out to the next one. Um, but, yeah, standard tier to begin and then figure out what, where you need to go from there. Yeah. Um, cool. We'll hit create. Correct. And now you'll see that we're going to put it straight into our resource group, which is awesome. Yep. Um, we're going to create a namespace. So we've already used Intune Training in other demos. Um so no docs. Jesus. <laughs> um, so we've used Intune Training previously. So this is why we're going to use Intune Training Demo. Yep. You'll note that it's automatically put it into the Australian East location because it's linked to great. our resource group. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Pricing tier, we're going to select the most cheapest one to keep Adam happy. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it goes up to 750 <laughs> Um these mice uh, things are going wild. Yeah. Anyway, yep. Okay. We're going to go um, ahead and select the basic one because yep. uh, that makes sense. $11 per month. Yeah. Okay. We Perfect. Can, right. I think we can afford that. Yeah. Uh, throughput units. What are throughput units, Steve? I don't know. I think that's, <laughs> it, it's, I, I believe that's where you can do threading and things like that. It, um, it, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And okay. in the our a, environment, a test and you failed. One. I'm comfortable with that. Um, that's cool. Let's go so ahead. let's step into the next phase. Um, TLS, always use the latest and greatest, local auth, yep. don't care. Um, and you have the ability to do public access only. This is really worth pointing is, out. Yeah. yeah, so it is worth pointing out that you cannot do that on the basic level. Uh, so yep. you need to be on premium or standard or higher. This is very standard for uh, not only namespaces or event hubs, but also logic apps. Uh, just app services as a rule of thumb, if you want to use some of the more secure uh, sort of, you know, uh, walled garden scenario things, uh, you, you do need to pay a little more. Um, yes. Kind of makes sense. Uh, kind of like all the mice uh, uh, on the screen right now. <laughs> it's great. Okay. Anyway, yep. so we're just going to go in. We're not going to put tags in. Um, no. If you're doing this in production, put tags in. Um, and then we're just If you need to. You do. Uh, d you know why tags are important. It, it basically you can do uh, cost uh, cost per Judge resource works. or cost. Yeah, you can look at what is actually costing you money. Tagging yeah. is important, and it doesn't actually cost you that much. Or it, Correct. it doesn't. As far as because time wise, it's it's free. Just do it. Yeah. Um, so now we're just going through the process of deploying our event hub, which is pretty straightforward, um, and it should be done in a, a minute or so. Yep. Um, which While we're waiting for this to happen, because Steve, I don't think you really explained that problem statement a great deal. You just sort of explained what Event Hub and, and stuff was. What What is the actual problem that we are trying to solve today? So let, let's make it very let's Make simple. a scenario. S simple scenario that I've, I've seen. Um, I have an executive registering their device and that I want to add their device to a certain group, um, no matter anything associated with that. Sure. Um, so this comes back to, I have registered a device and we are, um, we're just doing a swap and go scenario. I don't want to mm -hmm. have the admin overhead of tracking. This is an, an executive device. I sure. just want this to automatically be moved across. So this is where we want to be able to capture that uh, onboarding process and mm -hmm. then go and put them into uh, the right group. Sure. 
That makes sense. Um, and, and the other scenario is you're doing you're you're allowing user X to have application Y, mm -hmm. and but you're doing device based deployments. And this is where you can sit there and just say, well, when it's their primary device, because they're the registering user, it's mm -hmm. going to go and in, add that device to the group, and it'll go and install it. Nice. Um, and part of what we'll talk through once we get there is at what point that actually occurs and some of the gates you can put around that, which sure. might be of interest for people. Definitely. Okay, cool. So we've created the resource, uh, yep. the resource group, and we've just put an event hub account into that resource group. So we're going to go to that resource now. Um, my notes say, and just just for everyone that's watching this, I've never done this before. Uh, I was almost not going to uh, jump on this video. Uh, I'm here. And uh, so now we're going to do something according to my notes, which is uh, linking Intune to the Event Hub namespace. So how are we going to go about doing that? All right. So what we're going to look at here, it's pretty straightforward. We're now going to go to the Intune tab up the top mm -hmm. for us. And in Intune, we're going to go to Tenant Administration. Sure. So under here, we will see our diagnostic settings. We've used that, this previously for um, linking log analytics, but you'll also note that I've already created a separate event hub object there. What mm -hmm. you can do though, is we don't need to create, uh, we don't need to change what we've linked there. We can go and add an additional diagnostic setting object. Sure. And link that to the new object we've just created. So we're going uh, to tick we all, gonna... three, all four of those because it's useful. Sure. Um, the main one that we're going to be using is the operational log, the device Come compliance here. log. Yep. So the operational log will get us the process when the device gets registered. Mm -hmm. The device compliance org, that will give you a readout every day on a set schedule sure. to say, hey, this is the compliance status of your devices. Devices will give you a high level information of what's going on. And the top one is actually going to be really, uh, what I could see being the most common one used. It's what I, 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 yeah, which is what I like to call blame. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, sure. I can see who's doing what in my environment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, makes, that makes total sense. So you're essentially just skimming the logs from the environment and then we're going to do something over here. So the destination details, this is where, uh, based on, you know, sort of whatever you're doing as far as diagnostics, what yep. you actually want to do with these logs that you're uh, scooping up from Intune. So uh, evidently, we'll probably want to stream to an event hub. Correct. In this scenario, we're going to stream to an event hub. Um, previously, we've done the whole send to log analytics. Yeah. Um, but this time, we're going to stream to an event hub. So you'll see sure. straight away, it's going, hey, I'm going to grab this random uh, Intune training demo one. It's like, cool. Um, and then we're... We're going to select the drop down and we're going to leave that as no found because it's optional. It will okay. automatically create its own and it's automatically got the root managed shared key access that's there that should give you access to do everything you need to do. Awesome. So we then just hit save. Button should be down here, but anyway, let's let's hit save. And <clears throat> cool. and that's successfully completed. So if we go back to diagnostic settings now, we can see that that event hub demo link is there. So we're now basically, whenever anything happens, we're gonna be sending it to not only this initial one, but also yep. to our new one that we set up. So this is where you can have two different teams using that data and mm -hmm. doing different things on that uh, event. Yeah, um, for Because sure. the event is an um, ephemeral object that only, it, it's only exists until you look at it. Once you've looked at it, it gets processed and removed from the event hub. Yeah, this is job queuing 101 stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So not everybody created... does this stuff day to day, Ben. No, oh, come on. Sure they do. So okay. <laughs> uh, so we've created our resource group. We've created an event hub account. Uh, cool. We've linked uh, our service in, which will create an event hub uh, thing inside our account. So what um, we're going to quickly it's... do, mm -hmm. um, just for the demo, sure. is we're now going to go to the devices tab and we're going to quickly change a policy. And the reason why we're going to do this is so we actually see something in the environment. Mm -hmm. Pretty important, all right? So uh, okay. not devices. We want to go into policies, right? Uh, configuration profiles will do. But yeah, that's sure. Fine. Um, one thing to note that, and I love calling this out, is remediations has moved now. Remediations is hey, look at that. 
It's yeah, in a correct location. That's correct. Exciting. So proactive remediations is now under devices. Thank you, Anton. Nice. Yes, thank you, Anton. This is uh, greatly appreciated. Um, <laughs> um, it makes sense. This is yes. great. So we're not going to change anything in there, but we're going to go to any of the other profiles. Let's go configuration profiles. And sure. we're just going to grab any one of these and we're just going to change even just the description. Sure. Uh, let's go in here. Basic and edit. And let's do something very important here. And we're going to put a key. No. Up to the moon. Um, the intern was here. Yeah. Right. Perfect. We're going to save that. Cool. Done. So now we're going to go back to the uh, Azure portal. Mm -hmm. And we are now going to go hit the home button. Actually, we'll go, yeah, hit the home button. Uh, yep. And we're going to go to our Event Hub demo resource group. I'm going to pit, pit, pivot everything off that just because it's easy. Yeah, uh, sure. And in here, we're going to create uh, a new um, logic app. Actually, before we do that, when that's why we yes. want to see the, the message that comes up first. Well, no, because as soon as we look at it, we're not going to see it. Okay, again. sure. Um, this okay. is where so we, we want can to pull that straight into the Logic app and show it. Okay, cool. So just for everyone that's following, uh, because I'm as confused as you are, we, we've, got, we've got Event Hub that's essentially streaming logs into it, uh, but we can't really do anything with that, right? The Event Hub itself is literally a location that, uh, that events or messages get stored. You then need to do something with those messages. So what we're Correct. going to do today is we're going to create a Logic app to do the thing. Now, you could use, uh, you could use uh, Power Automate. You could use any kind of... Uh, solution you wanted, but Logic Apps is nice and easy and it's fun hey, to show you off. Can so. use, you can use PowerShell. You can just use straight PowerShell, exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's go into Logic App. And... Um, part, part of why, I, why I'm looking at Logic Apps as this demonstration is also because it can be done really quickly. Mm -hmm. So let's do Intune Training EH uh, Demo. Yep, and we want to call this Audit because we're going to have multiple different uh, node ashes. Um, we, we'll end up having multiple different um, sure. logic apps for each of the um, repos. We need mm -hmm. to change that to um, the region to Australian East. Yep. Because by default, I didn't pick it up. Sure. Uh, we want to set this to consumption. Mm -hmm. The difference, and, and, and this is where it's actually really important to understand the difference between consumption and standard. If you're using standard, you can connect it to source code and do CICD. If you're doing mm -hmm. consumption, it's an Azure template that you're needing to load in as an ARM object. So that, that's probably the biggest, easiest one to call out, but the costs associated with running it as a standard is not insignificant. So yeah. when you're doing your proof of concept, this is where you just go and use consumption. And then once you get to the point of going, hey, let's let's step through and make it a real system, you might want to end up going to standard. Sure. And consumption, just for my own benefit here, is basically the same thing as when you would create function apps. It's uh, It Correct. runs in an ephemeral state, does the work. Uh, and yep. then, you know, once it's not required, it turns itself off to save money, essentially. Correct. Uh, and you get cool. 5,000 runs for oh, free. Yeah, so Okay, so it's using the exact same backbone as, as function apps. Yep. Um, okay, cool. So we'll just review and create. No tags because we don't care about money. Thank you, uh, Adam. Uh, and we're just going to hit create. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, we'll give that a second. <laughs> and it's completed. Nice and easy. All right. And just to show, so we're now stepping into, actually, you know what? I'm just going to do this properly. I'm going to go into the resource that we've got. Yep. So we can see, we should Refresh. be able to see. Yep, there we go. So we've got Good. our Logic App and our Event Hub's namespace. So we're just going to go into the Logic App now. Yep. So what we need to do, um, we'll need to open another tab, if, if we can, Ben, um, sure. just for portal.azure. Um, the reason why is because we do need to create some keys in the event hub. Sure. So let me go into the event uh, hub namespace. I'll do this. Yep. 
I'll do this in the correct demo way. I'll start in the resource group and then I'll go yep. into the event hub namespace. Go Ben. Look at me. All right. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is if we go back to the event hub, we're going to quickly grab the connection string um, is so shared access policies. Uh, yep. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Uh, and we're going to add a new one. Cool. And we're going to call this um, Logic Apps Audit. Yeah. Um, and we want to and manage, we want to manage. Send and listen. Yep. Just we need manage. manage. And manage oh. was to turn on send and listen. Gotcha. So the connector for Logic Apps needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work without it, unfortunately. It's yeah. fine. Um, so now we're going to click on the Logic App Audit. And we're going to copy the connection string primary key. So the third one down. Got it. Um, for those that can't see Ben's mouse move on the screen. Um, and then we're going <laughs> to go back. So simple. <laughs> exactly. We're going to go back to the Logic App Designer tab for us, Ben. Yep. Uh, and we're going to scroll down just a touch. And we're going to do a blank Logic App. Sure. Uh, and then the connector that we're looking for here is Event Hub. So we're going to search for that. Then hubs, cool. Uh, yep. So when events are available in Event Hub, that's exactly what we want to do. So we're going to click on that as our trigger, uh, and you'll see down the bottom there's that connection string component. So we're going to um, just paste that in what we captured earlier, mm -hmm. and we hit create. And you can access do AAD. Fine. Yep, access key is fine for what we're using. Obviously. Okay. If you need it more secure, you can use Logic App Managed Identity or you can do AAD integrated, but that comes down yeah. to if you've got it as a private object, public object, et cetera, et cetera. For sure, yeah. I mean, look, we basically, this is not part of the or the scope of what we're talking about today, but if you've got no. the option to use Managed Identity in a full Azure solution, use Managed Identities. Just Definitely. Trust me on that. Anyway, uh, cool. So we've got our Logic App audit. We've got our access key or connection string. We just hit create. Yep, we hit create, perfect. Nice. Uh, we're going to say, no, we don't want to save that password and up in the top corner. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so now you'll see that the event hub um, name is there and you'll mm -hmm. note that it has insights, logs, audit logs. We didn't create that event hub object. So mm -hmm. if we go back to the third tab for us, Ben, mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, round, right down the left-hand side on the, uh, at the bottom, there's the event hubs, and you scroll down, so it's yep. not at the bottom anymore. Yep. Uh, what you'll note here is now we see the insights logs, audit logs. Okay. So that is the location of where Intune is sending that audit log that we sent through. So this is the diagnostics made... thing that we sent set up Correct. here, yeah? Yep. So what you'll see appear here over time is you're going to end up with all four of those <sighs> options that you selected that they gotcha. only get created the first time it sends a log to the um, platform. Yeah, sure. Nice and easy. And this is why you, you don't need to do anything crazy about creating the manual event hub itself. We've got our namespace and then it goes and creates those for us automatically. You'll note that the retention um, period is 24 hours. So after 24 hours, that message, if you haven't read it, will just disappear. And this is why it's, it's more around doing action on the device, not storing that information or doing action on the object coming through, mm -hmm. not storing it long term. So sure, this isn't yeah. your this isn't your um, audit history, unless yep. you go and then say, send an email and then save every single action as, as an email and your inbox becomes your audit tracker. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Please yeah, don't do no. that. Yeah, this <laughs> but is you can. Yeah. So this is a message queuing service is not meant to be uh, a stateful thing. You can use it to uh, follow state, but it is not state storage or historical storage. Exactly. Um, nice. So we've called that out. Which now we want to go back to our logic app designer. Cool. Um, cool. We're going to select the insights log audit logs. So the thing to note, what we've set up here is because we've used it at the, the connection key at the top level, we can then, when all of the other, other event hubs appear there, we can go and grab them with the same connection string. Mm -hmm. Because if we go back to the third tab, I know we're bouncing around a little bit, I apologize, but it's so we don't have to save stuff. 
Um, and we go back to our resource group being the event hub demo. And then we refresh. What we should see there is there should be an API connection. Yep. And that automatically gets created when we that's go cool. through and do that connection into the logic app. Nice. So that's how you track what's going on. And this is why you want to have your own resource group for it because you're going to have all of this stuff that yep. just gets created across your tenant. And you're like, people will be like, you created this. Doing, it's like, yeah. I don't remember creating that. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your actions created this, which is fine. Right. This is all good. Yeah. And, and just okay. understand. So that, that's why. I just want to call that out, right? So now if we go back to our Logic App Designer, mm -hmm. oh, and if you do delete that, that causes problems. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next step that we want to do is we want to add a step. Okay. We're keeping the Octet stream as the content yep. side? Yep. Nice. All right. That's cool. Um, technically, we could do it as JSON, but Octet stream actually does what we need. Cool. All right. Sweet. We're going to create a new step now. Yep. Um, so that's our trigger point. When a new event uh, appears in that event hub uh, queue, we're going to do the thing. Um, and to note, if you click it back out just for a second, then uh, you'll see that we run it every three minutes. We just check to see if there's something there. Yeah, that's cool. Which so is that can get easy. changed minute, month, week, yep. day. So you know you could make this. You could make this very cheap. Uh, but for the for the scenario that uh, Steve painted, we kind of want to run this at a fairly regular clip. Yeah. Um, and you can see that there's also, you can put a maximum number of events you're going to pull through. So mm -hmm. if you're hitting your maximum events, you need to hit the endpoint more often. Yeah, sure. That's cool. Awesome. Logical right, what's stuff. the next, what's the next, yeah, in logic apps? Never. No. Uh, right, um, so what we're going we're to do, do is we're going to parse a JSON. Because we're going to parse the result from um, the event and mm -hmm. we're then going to process it. So we'll just type in parse JSON because it's just going to be easier than trying to find mm. um, parse space JSON. And it should come up with the default trigger, uh, default um, object. This one here. Uh, yep, that's the one, the purple cool. one. So this is under data operations for everyone following, but it's, uh, yeah, parse JSON. Yep. So we're going to click that. And now one thing I'll, I'll call out straight away, and, and we'll see this once we start demoing it and running it and triggering it, is we're actually, um, the content string that we're going to use is actually base64. Mm -hmm. And we all know base64, oh yeah, what you do is you just convert it to string. How do yeah. I do that in Logic App? What's the easiest mm. way? Um, there's actually a, a native function for it. So if we select the content field for us, yep, uh, and then we select expression on the right-hand side, Sure. And we're going to type in base64 to string or one word. Nice. And there we go there. And then we're going to put round brackets there. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the dynamic tab on the at the top. And we're going to select content. Nice. Because I know that that contains a base64 string. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Straightforward, easy. We're going to yeah. click OK. And that uh, creates and that. That creates that. Nice. So in the schema field, well, we don't know what that's going to look like right now, do we? No, not at all. So the easiest option here is just put two curly braces, open and close it. And we're going to save. That's horrifying. You'll see why. Save. So we're going to run it once, aren't we? Yep. Nice. So now we've hit run trigger. Oh, uh, and we made that one change. Gotcha. Yep. And it's going to sit there and go, hey, there's a problem here. Um, and we know that there's going to be, well, I actually didn't throw a problem. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> Just worked. Wow. So I guess, you know, technically oh, the schema was no. correct. Now <laughs> yeah, so the schema is correct. But yeah. what it's actually done is it's not converted into objects for you. Yeah, that's correct. So you can't actually, well, mm, okay. I'm going to be very careful with my words here. You can convert this to objects, but essentially you have no type safety with the with what data is coming through. So let's not do that. Let's go and grab the output. So this is, I assume what Steve was trying to get at was we yep. uh, ran this when we were going to grab so this what you, content. Well, it wasn't going to grab the output. It was going to grab the input, but either either, or either the it input? doesn't matter. Are you yeah. sure? I can yes. change it. Yes. All right, we're so going to do the output. There's X on the right-hand side. 
um, and then we go show raw inputs because that's the show content that we're sending. And sure. that top line mm -hmm. is actually what we're looking at. Anything inside the quotations. It doesn't sure. format nicely, um, no. but considering we've got the hack where we've got the little curly braces, technically we could just use the output of the other one and it's going to format better. Sure. Doesn't so really we, we want the input or the output, it's the same content basically. Just do the output, um, yeah. Okay, but that's cool. If, if we do it as the input, we then have to handle the escaped yeah. quotation marks. You. Cool, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so we've got our result. We Look at that, I found another hack. <laughs> bad hack, a, don't use it. Intune.life hacks. All right, yep. um, so, so we're going to go back into designer. Uh, we're here, no, did we have, no. did we copy the text? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good, oh, good, yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Um, so delete the two round brackets just to make sure it doesn't leave it there. <laughs> um, it shouldn't, but I'm pedantic on that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to select the use payload sample, uh, payload to sample, payload to generate. And we paste that in there and we hit done. Yeah. So what's cool about this is it actually grabs the payload data and converts it into JSON schema so that you don't need to write this stuff because technically this is easy enough if you sort of go through, you know, like, okay, what's, what's the, what's the thing that we're getting? Well, it's an object. It's got some properties. What is the body? It is also an object because it has multiple properties. And then the records is a type of array, which means there's multiple items in it, it like it becomes very tedious to write this by hand. There are yes. services that allow you to do this. This is one of them. So you can do this in Logic Apps. You can also do this in Power Automate. Basically, the entire uh, Power Platform has the ability to throw a JSON uh, object at it, and it will create the schema for you. It might not be perfect, uh, and there are things that you can do with this. So you can say that um, specific values are required, as an example. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, if that's missing, then it's uh, deemed as incorrect schema. Um, but you know, this is good enough so for what we're doing. The other thing that I'll call out that I've ran into as part of my testing is you can also, where you have the type, you can put comma quotation mark null. So in certain circumstances where you're using app auth instead of user auth, mm -hmm. this will go through and say, Hey, somebody access this with app auth and there's no user identity for it. Sure. Sure. Um, so it presents null and the logic app just laughs at you. So it's just something to take it to understand, yeah. look at the error messages and go, cool. Um, I've now fixed it. So our environment doesn't do that, but yeah, <laughs> it's nice. just calling okay. that out. So we've now um, got the schema created, which is awesome. That's half the battle. Yep. Um, what else are we doing here? <clears throat> So Besides what we can a little mouse dance. Here we are. Um, so from there, let's hit the save button because I'm pedantic and I want to make sure that I'm saving what I'm doing. Sure. Um, and from there, what we're going to now, now have the ability to do is we want to do a step through on the events. So sure. we're going to hit a new step. Uh, and in here, um, we're going to use a condition a condition. Yeah. So just type uh, conditions. I think it is. Or is it for each? We got controls. We got four H's under control, I believe. Well, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, there we no, go. Try for each. Go back. Oh, we've got four H. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, and then you just select the output from the parse JSON. And here, mm -hmm. here's the thing, right? What you can do, so you'd be selecting records in this scenario because that okay, record sure. will have multiple objects. Mm -hmm. um, but what you can do, and, and I think this is important to call out, is if you just click off that box for us, okay, yep, and see the three dots for the parse JSON, yep. you can go here and you can rename that. Mm. So if you've got multiple entries that you're bringing in, you can go, hey, this is what it is. So that yeah. you then later on, you have logic associated with what you're doing. Yeah, you're essentially outputting this data to a variable and giving that instead of just a name that is parsed JSON, uh, giving yeah. it a unique name. Cool. Yeah, magic, right? That's super magic. Yeah. All right, so we're now looping through the records here. What are we doing with those records? Um, we can do whatever we'd like to do with those records. Okay, what do you want to do with the records? 
let's let's play the, the let's play my favorite game blame so okay. let's let's add an action cool uh and we are going to uh do send an email cool i just want to see if we can do this instead because email is terrible and no one should be doing email can we send a team's notification or do I we just go so. uh it'll be a webhook um you should be uh, able to send a team's notification so if you hit built in i would assume maybe standard let's have a look we can just send a http thing but if this is too difficult <laughs> no you let's can i'm pretty sure you can <laughs> yeah, let's have a look what do we got service bus as your key vault enterprise um, look at teams like as in type in teams and then because you've taken that out mm -hmm. and then go to standard well, that Let's makes it look complicated asana this is great it's a lot of uh, a lot of vendor solutions right yeah. these first party ones Azure DevOps. I don't think it's a native solution. Um, um, that's okay. We don't need to do that. We can just send an email. That's fine. It's 1990 and email's fresh and shiny. Yeah, no. Look for Microsoft Teams. <laughs> and then drop, hit, see the arrow that points down? Hit that. Yep. Microsoft Teams. Uh, I will see it. There we go. Microsoft Teams. Nice. Okay. Uh, so we are going to, uh, let's have a look here. We're going to create, create a, a chat. message. We'll create, create a chat. Yeah. No, it should be. At mention somebody. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look. What options have we got? No, it's, it's created chat. It's fine. We'll just create a chat. I would have assumed there'd be a, a message or something, but that's It'd all good. It'd be post, wouldn't it? Under... Let's have a look here. So, uh, post a choice of options, post a feed notification, post a card in chat. This is probably what we want. Post a post, data card and wait for post a Post message, message in a message. chat. Or ch this is what we want. Yep. Okay. Let's sign in. Let's, oh God. This might not work. Uh, <laughs> let's have a we look. have not let's tested what, this. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. This is going to probably go over to my, uh, let's have a look. Oh no, this might be okay. It might be okay. Yeah. The auth dance just happened external. So post as Flowbot. Uh, sure, that's fine. Yep. Uh, we've got a bunch of different options here. I could technically also say uh, run as user and that's going to run as me because I've essentially created my um, user-based managed identity connection here. Uh, but we'll just do Flowbot. It's fine. Um, and then post. We're just going to say uh, channel. You can post uh, with group chat. Interesting. Yeah. Can you please get me a team ID? Do, are you on uh, the engine training teams? No, I'm not. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, let me... Because this wasn't part of the demo. It was supposed to be straight into... <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's all good. That's all good. Uh, let's just do this. Uh, uh, all alerts. Error. Yeah, all alerts. Perfect. All right, nice. And then what we could do is we could just dump in the current item. We're not going to yep. do any formatting or anything like that nonsense, but um, this is going to go for each record. It's just going to dump the item into that message and send it through. So you can obviously expand that and make it pretty, do all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, functionally, in this scenario, you would not be sending a message. You would be sending an action item or a an card. adaptive card. Uh, but, you know, we're, we we don't do things correct here. So no. we're just going to... And gonna... also what you can do, and, and, and this is probably something that we should put in there first, but we're not going to because we're, <laughs> we're, we're awesome, mm -hmm. um, is what you can also do is sit there and put a condition at the top of it and go, I only want to get messages if the intern does this. So then yeah, I exactly. can review what's actually going on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, so we got that, and that's happy days. Um, uh, we'll save this. Is there anything else we wanted to do, or we're just anytime we get an event, we're just going to send the message yep. to Teams? Let's just do that in this scenario. All right, sure. Uh, let me just see if I can get to. Is it just Teams.Microsoft.com? Yep, Teams.Microsoft.com. Ben's Dev Team. 
Nice. Oh, I remember what I used this for. Cool. Okay. Um, excellent. <laughs> this is, this is uh, working out well. First tab. First tab. All right. Uh, do we want to run this again or do I need to generate another thing? Because that uh, uh, would have so been assumed. So here's the cool part, right? So now mm -hmm. if you go back, um, so we've saved it. Mm -hmm. And now you see where we have the uh, breadcrumb. Just click on the event hub demo audit. Uh, just here? Yep. yep. And then we select run history. I will find it. I will find it. Run histories. Yep. Runs history. Oh, interesting. Uh, and it's not there. That's a shame. Um, should be able to hit run trigger and let's see if it triggers it. No, it's there. Oh, there we go. It just, right, so just we... needed to refresh it. Cool. So now what we do is actually click on that. Mm -hmm. And we then hit the resubmit button. Nice. Okay. And it's going to take the messages that we received from the event hub and run it through our new... Um, new flow yeah new flow so then on the left hand side underneath the runs history we're mm -hmm. going to hit the refresh button and what should appear there no There's surprise big, fat error yep and we click on that and it's more than likely going to have an issue with us parsing the yeah it did um okay. parsing it into the what's name so if we hit the for each uh, we can then step in oh hang on yeah it's because uh, it's of type null <laughs> there were no records to send through. Okay. So if we look at the parse record, uh, parse JSON. Yeah. Uh, that's wrong. There is records. Yeah, that's correct. So let's have a look. Let's try and figure out what's going on. So we got body records. There's absolutely data here. Yep. Let's just, um, let's just make a change to a thing and just see what happens. All right. I'll Sound do like that. Fun? You're going to Actually, do that? No, you do that because... I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. I'm going to go in. So I've made some changes to that uh, policy. I want to uh, clean up up to myself so that no one sees what I did. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that this will uh, show that that stops that from happening. So configuration profiles. I'm going to go edit. I'm going to delete my emojis. Was not here and we'll hit save all right let's go back to our logic app and cool. let's watch it not work so yes. we're going to go to event hub audit we've got our runs history if i refresh this refresh and the interesting thing is if you go to trigger history that trigger yep. history is going to be different to what you see in runs history and that's because the trigger will trigger every time but if mm -hmm. there's no event there, it doesn't run it. Sure. So okay. basically what's happening is the logic app is going, hey, do you have anything for me? No, don't worry about it. And sure, then it sure. won't. But if it does, it will spin up and, and process. Cool. Uh, um, so this isn't going to happen immediately because we've got this configured to basically check that um, event hub every three minutes. Um, so we could sit here and wait for it. Or we can just hit uh, run trigger. Or we can just hit run trigger. So we're Let's just going to run trigger, which run. is the same scenario, right? Yeah, exactly. And we'll just refresh that. And it will probably fail because we're awesome. Probably. <clears throat> Let's have a look. It's and if we go to trigger it. history, has it triggered? 17. Hasn't triggered yet. Has it um, triggered? It and this will come down to the fact that we're using the uh, free, sorry, basic. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yep. so we just have to just just let it get queued. Let's go select run history and then see if it's come up. Refresh, it has right. trigger history. There we go. So it skipped. So it didn't see the task there or the job there. Okay. It hasn't processed through into the pipeline yet. Shall I run the trigger again? Yes. I'll give this a second. So while that's processing through, let's go to the third tab. Um, and just to call out, if you hit refresh, what you'll see in here is you'll see the Teams API connection as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so every time you add a connector, it's adding it as an API connection in there. So 
it makes life a lot easier. And what that allows any device, any logic app in that group can use that connector. Nice. Um, all right, let's have a quick look at this again. Yep. Refresh. There, there we, we go. go. We've got a whole bunch of things. Now, these are all failing. I think it's just the schema that was a bit weird. Yeah. Um, but if we go in and have a look at one of them, uh, the most recent one. Yeah, so it's just saying the records is of type null, uh, which is interesting, considering it is not. Uh, but that's the schema. So what we can do here, right, is yeah. we can now go and grab um, the raw outputs or yeah. even, um, and, and we'll copy it again. Sure. I think it's because it was in body. Um, yeah. Oh, but... actually it could be. Let's go back to, mm -hmm. no, not back button because that then loses all our breadcrumbs. I hate that. But anyway, it's let's a, click on, bit annoying. let's hit the parse JSON. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's because it's inside body when we're... Oh, and so, we pull just the records. Then. Yeah. Okay. So oh, if you hit the show, if you show output, yeah. Show raw output. Mm -hmm. um, what we need to do is the curly brace from body. So after that to the end, control so shift. So just end. this whole thing? Yep. And, and except for the last curly brace. Yeah. Okay. So we want to go back. Copy that. Yep. And now we need to go back. Oh, oh we can't use breadcrumbs. That's a shame. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Let's first go back one. into the logic app. Yeah. Logic app designer. So, so the kids, this is why you don't use the uh, back forward button in the actual browser anymore. <laughs> uh, and then you go to parse JSON and then the upload and paste. Okay. And hit done. Yep. And, and you'll note that it's now removed that. So again, we can go back to that task that ran through. So if we now mm -hmm. go uh, yep, and we scroll to the overview uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, yes, overview. <clears throat> and we will just want to go into this one. Yep. And now we just resubmit. want to hit resubmit. And all this will do is it, it's going to resubmit that with the same data on the latest version of it. It's going to fail. Why did it fail? It's a good it question. Have failed. It shouldn't have failed. All right. Let's have a quick look. Cool, we got that. Let's have a look at the for each. Because we're on body records. Oh, we just gotta yeah. go here, change that. Yep. That that will cool. do it. And save. Although I mean it should have used body records correctly, but that's that's all good. Well, uh, no, all body right. body doesn't exist anymore. Sure, sure. Uh, all right, let's run that one more time. You go in, resubmit. It's thinking this time. Hey, we got well, green. We, we got green. All right, let's have a quick look at teams. Oh, look at the that. Object. <laughs> And it's this this level of formatting is absolutely fine to send to your uh, C level um, people. Yes. So you know uh, your your CTO, CFO, and uh, CISO all want just raw JSON. Um, it is the most important thing. Uh, I think if you've learned anything from me doing years and years of this, is just raw JSON and a uh, Teams message is adequate. Exactly. Um, awesome. Okay. So okay. So we've just used Logic App um, to basically consume alerts. Um, now we were talking about uh, the pricing of Event Hub, and like we we rarely talk about pricing and these sort of things, but I think it is cognizant, um, you know, because aside from the weird troubleshooting steps that we had to do, you could get this set up in less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. We do need to we do need to talk about the cost of this sort of stuff because it can be a thing. Now this basically is a scaling problem um, in an organization that only has probably a you know a couple of thousand devices. Um, you could probably get away with the cheapest level and, you know, be looking at what, like $11 a month. Yeah. Um, but the more events that you want to do with things. So, you know, we've done a very uh, minimal scenario here where um, a thing happens, a change happens, and then an event happens. But if you wanted to be more granular and say, uh, we were just waiting for one specific scenario to run, um, then you could get away with doing this very cheaply. Um, big caveat here, obviously, we're not, you know, we're paying for this sort of stuff, but 
you know, I, I'm not using this in production right now, um, so I don't have any real world scenarios of the cost no, of this. But it is definitely something that provides you a way to, uh, you know, essentially automate the process of something happening in tune. I want to do an action based on that, um, which I just think is really cool. Um, there was one scenario that you were talking about before we started that I thought was really cool. And just the idea of um, stepping through and actually watching uh, the onboarding process of a device. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do, yeah, r rather than going through and spinning up a VM and all of that, what we're going to do is mm -hmm. we're going to look at what I've created previously. And it's still something that I'm working through, but I, sure. I think this is actually pretty cool. So uh, if you hit home, um, Ben, in their um, sure. breadcrumbs. Yep. And then we're going to go and can we select resource groups? So yes, more services, can. resource groups, or resource groups on the left-hand side, or search for mm -hmm. the top. Uh, and then what we wanted to look for here is Intune Training Event Hubs. Cool. Uh, and then in here, I have uh, created the operational object. This one here? Yep, and we're going to select that Logic App. Um, so this is still work in progress, but it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm working through. So if we go Logic App Designer, and I'm going to actually show you something a little bit different here as well. It's, it looks a lot nicer. Um, sure. Hit the preview designer for us. Uh, yep. We're not going to save anything in here because there's some in unexpected responses that we see. But what you're sure, seeing sure, here sure. is what you're going to see eventually is that nice, easy drag drop functionality, and it looks a lot easier to visualize. So mm -hmm. we've now, if we look at our... Um, click on the event hub option. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using the default bottom level. So if we hit the drop down for the event hub names, what you should see is there's actually a whole heap of extra ones there. Yeah, yeah. Um, beyond the four that we have, right? Oh, I like this one. Non interactive yeah. user sign in logs. That's cool. Um, and we also have um, sign in logs. And mm -hmm. what that's come from is if we just quickly grab another tab and we're going to mm -hmm. aad.portal.azure. And we'll wait for it to go through the auth dance. I was about to say, it seems like a, it seems like a weird URL to just get to enter, right? Uh, yep. Anyway, okay. And now, we go, now we're going to go to Azure AD. Yeah. Sorry, Azure Active Directory. Um, and if we scroll down uh, the middle section, what we're looking for is diagnostic settings. So the same as what we did in Intune. Yeah, yeah. And in here, we're then going to click the diagnostic settings, and you'll see that I've turned that on for mm -hmm. my Intune training demo. Uh, if we hit edit settings, I'm awesome. I've selected every event because <laughs> I'm, that's what yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, but you select what makes sense for you as an organization, and then you can go and do action on this. So but if yeah, this would... this stuff oh this stuff is so good. So okay, uh, you know we were talking initially about uh, managed identities and it doesn't fit in the scope of this conversation, uh, but it's, I guarantee you it's going to be a thing that um, the the guys talk about on the Graph One Hundred One sessions uh, coming up. But you know the idea that you can actually track uh, when those managed identities are used is is huge uh, yep. because you can you know if you've got uh, a relatively small team. You've just started playing with Azure. Everyone's got access to create their own cool little automations. You maybe aren't always looking at what's being created. And maybe someone, maybe the intern has created some terrible thing. They've used managed identities and it's just constantly polling. You can use this sort of stuff to be like, hey, why is this uh, little automation yep. account you've got created running every three seconds? You can track that. I, I think that's really I'll, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll throw another one in there for you, Ben, mm -hmm. that I think people should be looking. ADFS sign-in logs. This is where you sure. can track where people are still using ADFS in your environment. So you mm -hmm. can start triggering and going, hey, what what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? Where, where is it coming from? And you actually get all of that information. Yeah, um, the other really cool, cool one is if you scroll down, mm -hmm. the one that you're going to really like is the Microsoft Graph Activity Log. Yeah, nice. So anything going on in the graph, I can see what's going on. That's very cool. cool. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a complete aside. But why I'm calling that out is we have the visibility to see more than just Intune. You can use this elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we have all of this set up. It's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's the same as what we had set up previously. 
Yeah. Um, we're parsing our JSON, so we've got our schema. If you look in here, you'll see that we've actually added the null record into our type for a couple of them because we found that we had some issues with authentication. Cool. Uh, the next step that we're going through, and, and this is the part that I'm still working through because I ran out of time in my preparation, mm -hmm. um, is if we go to the Git group members, uh, we're going off and getting group membership of devices that are registered in autopilot yep. so that we then get the AAD object ID. Yeah, sure. Not the so AAD is... device ID. Yeah, the object ID, yeah. So we've, yep. we've done something very similar to this in the past with uh, Power Automate. Um, uh, and, you know, sort of the, we, the, the scenario we did was uh, adding a user or a device to a group based on a certain thing. So yep. it's, yeah, it's a very similar uh, experience, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then if we scroll down, what we're then going to do is we're going to do, oh, no, not that one. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're stepping through the 4-H. So if we hit on that 4-H, we're stepping through the body records, again, mm -hmm. of the parse JSON. So yep. for every record. And then what we're going to step through is on the second 4-H is we're stepping through group members. Yeah. So if... We are. We, we want to go through every record, and then we're stepping through each of the group members. And what we're then saying is, in the conditions, yeah. If we can select that, Ben, um, we've got a couple of cool things here where we're saying the body operation name equals ESP enrollment. So mm -hmm. I only want to know has it gone through that ESP? Is it is it a message from ESP enrollment? Yes, it is. And did the user reach the desktop? Yes, awesome. What I then want to look at is, is the user a member of that group? So actually, this is yeah, this is actually slightly different. It's not the group that I was talking about. This is going and looking at my um, executive group users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and we're it's stepping just through. A, sure, yeah. yeah. I understand it. Um, uh, so this is cool. Yeah. So we're basically looking for the ESP enrollment. Um, is, you know, so is the record an ESP enrollment record? Um, yep. In that record, did the user actually reach the desktop? Which, you know, yep. if it didn't, there's bigger problems. Uh, well, and, and that's right. You, the can desktop, then, you can create a rule. If it didn't make the desktop, then go do, do something. something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, go and, go finally, and proactively reach out to the customer. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, all right. So, and then we've got based on this, so condition is true. Yep. So you're not doing if anything, if in these conditions, if, if it doesn't meet any of those, you're just bombing out to nothing. Which At the fine. moment, which yeah, we can, um, it, it, this is a proof of concept. Sure, um, sure. But in this scenario, if all of those are successful, it's then going to send me an email. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to provide me the UPN of the user that set up the device and a whole yeah, heap nice. of other stuff. Because that UPN is not included by default mm -hmm. in the, um, the record. Object. Yeah, uh, in the device object that's being registered, mm -hmm. um, and, and this is the same that user. Yep. So actually, adding the device object mm -hmm. to another security group. Right now, this is manually written in there because I was mm. still working through that last. Oh, part. I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Steve. Okay, cool. So functionally what you would be doing is this uh, This would not be a hard-coded user ID. No. This would be the user ID from the condition that you pulled. So the this isn't down. the user ID. So this is the device object. Gotcha. It's, so if we've we done go this before. To, remember, yeah. devices and users are just objects. They, That's they right. are the same thing. Um, yeah. and, and this is where you need to go and query the... Um, AAD group for the devices registered in um, autopilot, mm -hmm. then you can actually pull back the AAD object ID, not the AAD device ID, which is what we're using everywhere yeah, else in Intune. So that's the last part that we haven't actually got completed, but mm -hmm. conceptually this all works. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Um, and then you can do tasks. And the thing is, because you're not sitting there and firing on the graph endpoint, you don't need to worry about throttling. You don't mm -hmm. need to worry about any of that. If you've got 50 devices being built every three minutes in your environment because you're such a large organization, this will go and process every three minutes for you without a problem. Mm -hmm. There's no scaling issues associated other than you might need to swipe your credit card a little bit more often. 
I was about to say the the trade off here is that uh, instead of just polling graph and hoping that you don't get rate limited, uh, there's a chance it may might cost a little bit. So yeah, uh, for for anyone who's still watching, uh, I think we're on uh, uh, I don't even know an amount of time yeah. that we've been talking. Uh, you know, we we know that most of you don't get to the end here. Uh, if you do find this interesting and you do run it, um, would be very curious to know um, sort of. Uh, a, how many devices you've got in your environment, and B, um, uh, over you know over a month or two months, uh, what does the cost look like? Um, do yep. you do you run into limitations? Um, this is the sort of stuff that we'd love to know. Yeah, uh, one limitation that I do know, and and I can quickly demo this one, Ben, is sure. if we go back to the Intune Training Event Hubs resource group. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that's okay, not a problem, and that one there. And then if we go to the compliance, so Intune Training Compliance, uh, and then you'll see here, this is running once a day. If mm -hmm. you look at the run history, yep. and that's because that's the only time that compliance is actually posted to say that there's compliance for that device. Sure. So you'll note that it's the 27th of the 5th, 26th of the 5th, 25th, uh, it's firing yeah. twice. I don't know why I've gotten to that point. <laughs> yeah. um, but what you'll note is that it's there only once a day. So device mm -hmm. compliance, it's not being reported every hour, every minute, whatever. Yeah. It's once a day. And this is where the AAD logs may well have that better insight for you. Because they, they do a little more yeah, and, and I, actions. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't dug into that but I would assume that they're going to have more real-time data there mm -hmm. because it is something around security. Yeah, sure. That makes total sense. Um, um, yeah. I mean, the, the, what you're saying essentially makes sense, right? You know, we, we are, we are uh, s uh, just sitting here waiting to consume a message. If that message doesn't get created more than once a day, you can't do more than one thing a day with this data because there's, there's just no content there. So that's right. Um, I think that makes total sense. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and yeah, let us know what you do with it because we're very curious to see how this this is used. Yeah, for sure. Um, if if this is interesting for anyone, let us know. If you want to see more things that we you can do with uh, with Event Hub or even Logic Apps or, or Power Automate, you know, this is the sort of stuff that I uh, that I get very excited about uh, working with. So, uh, if yep. you're if you want to see more of this stuff, let us know. Um, Otherwise, Steve, this has been fantastic. I think uh, I think yeah, this definitely. definitely got legs. Awesome. No, I agree too. Um, awesome. Thanks, Ben. You're more than welcome. Talk to everyone later. See you later. Bye. Bye.